You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is a box from Birmingham a Pen Company, where I ordered some inks. Let's get in here. This came via FedEx today. It's FedEx today, and it uh, <laughs> was sent four days ago, so that seems about right. Let's get in here. All right, all right. I cover everything? Yes, good. All right. All right, so this fun little cork card that Birmingham has. Thank you for your business. You're welcome, Birmingham Pens. We have here a postcard. That's cool. That's some layered cardstock. Nice. And fun paper clip, shaped like an ink bottle. I dig it. We have in here, thank you for your opportunity to earn your business. Today at Birmingham Pin Company, as an operation with two full-time employees, really appreciate the support. We prepared this package for you with care prior to handling it to our local carrier. If there's something we can do to help improve this experience, we're available. Complete satisfaction of purchase and guaranteed in every regard. Thank you again for becoming a meaningful part. You're welcome. Uh, thanks, Nick, for the card. Oh, we have a little sheet of uh, Tomoe River. Maybe used to test pen and ink. Well, that's fun. That's, a, that's an interesting thing to throw in. And then... We have uh, our invoices, our inks and stuff. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's go ahead and put this over here, y'all. And get in here. I ordered five inks. And there they are. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. This is an interesting packing situation here. I like this. This is some fun, this is some fun paper. All right. As usual, nothing labeled on the outside of the bottles. Let me just unwrap all of these real quick. All right, so I always take a label maker and uh, <laughs> just like make new labels for these. We have here Kentucky Bluegrass, and yeah, as I was afraid, they've uh, they've actually taken the little story off the side of the uh, off the side of the bottle, which is unfortunate. I really like those little stories. It does, however, tell you what collection this is in. This is a crisp formula, so that's that's nice. Yeah, bring back those stories, y'all. Each of these inks has a... Can I get this open? Come on. There we go. Oh, I open the bottom. Oh, well. Uh, Voltaic Arc from the Rich Formula collection. The Rich Formula ones are heavy sheeners and stuff like that. Let's see. Yep, top opens. Oh, that's the bottom. You never know what's going to open more easily. Saltwater Taffy Swift Formula. And Stormwater Runoff from the Crisp Formula Collection. I'll have to remember to put that crisp and rich and swift stuff on the, uh, on the labels when I make them. And lastly, Pennsylvania Slate in the Crisp Formula. So crisp, crisp, rich, swift, crisp. So I got three crisps, a rich, and a swift. Let me go ahead and go to their page and look up the stories so I can at least say them here uh, since they didn't put them on the bottle, sadly. Okay, so let's take these one at a time. I've got a uh, stack of uh, Colodex cards here to put them on as smears. Let's start with Kentucky Bluegrass because that is first up here on the uh, on the page. This is, uh, let's see, where are you, Kentucky Bluegrass? There we go. This one. Hmm. Kentucky Bluegrass doesn't actually have a story next to it, which is, uh, which is too bad. Maybe they've just stopped doing stories. I don't know. All right. Let's get this on here. Does not really want to stick to my letter opener. All right. All right. Whoops. <laughs> I tried to recap it with that cap. That's not going to work. Or it would. It may just make it drop it in there and lose it forever. All right. So there's Kentucky Bluegrass, which is a very nice kind of grassy green. Yep. I can see how they're going with that. And uh, I was a bit worried about it over here, but I think maybe I just didn't have enough ink on the pen. It looks better over here. We'll have to see what this, uh, how this performs in a pen. 
I think these uh, these crisp recipes are supposed to be working with a vol- uh, they are formulated to perform well with a variety of premium mid range and discount papers. So it should be a, uh, an ink that works on all kinds of paper, uh, and that's kind of cool. So we'll see how that goes when I get around to reviewing full the full line here that I've done, or the full full line that I bought anyway. I haven't bought all of them by any stretch. Next up, let's do Pennsylvania Slate, which is this one right here, and. Again, no story with this one. They just didn't do a story on it. That's okay. All right, that worked out very nicely. I like the way that looks in a... I like the way that looks from my dip pen. Good. Good looking color. Again, it doesn't really want to stick to my letter opener. There we go. Got a good amount there. All right, let's see. let that dry. We'll set it aside here. But uh, first impression is I like this. I think that's going to be a good looking ink. It's kind of a denim-y sort of blue too, I think. Okay, next up, Stormwater Runoff. The last one I got from their Crisp collection. I want to try out these Crisp ones. Uh, the one, Some of those, the ones that I had used before were a little bit on the bleedy side, and I think these are supposed to not do that. And I hate it when an ink bleeds, so this ought to be good for me. And stormwater runoff looks, I mean, look at it on that nib there. That looks very cool. <laughs> Do you realize you're at 2020 on this one? <laughs> Let's fix that. There we go. I can't believe it's uh, <laughs> it's already April. I'm still writing 2020 on things. 2020 really made an impression, I guess. There we go. So this is a color that I, uh, I'm i glad I picked up because that is a cool color. That is really in my wheelhouse. I want something a little bit weird, but totally readable. I was a little bit worried about these crisp formula inks because in some of their writing samples, uh, the ink looked so light that I wasn't really sure if I was going to dig it. But... Uh, it looked really good here from this uh, this dip pen anyway, so hopefully that will translate to what it looks like from a fountain pen. Uh, but you know, it doesn't always. So we'll see how it goes. All right, two left to go. Let's do saltwater taffy next. This ink is a way different color than all the rest of them, which is totally fine with me. Uh all right, so these Swift Formula inks are designed to start quick, quickly, write wet, and operate easily with a, within a ver wide variety of fountain pens. Uh, let's see how it looks on this. It's not doing any bleeding, but it does look like it kind of spread. So we'll see. I think these are formulated to be extra wet, and maybe this is one you're going to want to keep in a drier nib. I'm just going to have to see how this goes once I put it in a fountain pen. I tell you right off, I really like these sort of... Uh, electric coral pink color we've got going on here. I think this is pretty neat. And I think if this one uh, writes well, it's going to be a real hit with a lot of people. Uh, we'll have to see what it looks like in a fountain pen, of course. But uh, I like the way it looks in a swatch. It looks real good in a swatch. All right, and last up, this is one that I was, <laughs> I was actually very keen to get my hands on. This is Voltaic Arc. And uh, there's actually, is that a smudge on the outside of the bottle? I think it is. Somebody had a little bit of, little bit of ink on the uh, outside of the bottle. And you can see actually a little bit of sheen there. Uh, I've already got it kind of on my fingers, <laughs> which is totally fine. This is from the Rich Formula. And these are said to produce a sheening effect on high quality fountain pen papers like Tomoe River and Rhodia. The writing sample in this listing is produced on 86 gram uh, Tomoe River. Uh, rich formula inks have a longer dry time than traditional formula inks, but they'll exhibit a variety of properties unique to the saturated recipe. Uh, interesting. Is there even a traditional ink set anymore? No, they've gotten rid of the traditional ones. So I think that was a little bit of old copy. Uh, I think the traditional now has been called Swift. They've relabeled that, um, that set of things. But I do love a good sheener. So we'll see how this goes. Oh yeah, it really coats the it really coats the nib here. You can really tell a difference between this and some of the other ones. Yeah, this this dip nib sometimes picks up a whole lot of ink, and that is the case in this one. It really stuck to it well.
All right, you can see this is a very rich blue color. Actually, on the camera, I think it's coming off uh, very sheeny already. It's a little bit more blue here to my eye. Let's move it around a little bit. I probably should have done this one first so it would have time to dry. But uh, let's set it aside, look at some of these dried samples, and we'll come back to this one hopefully in a minute when it has had a chance to, to dry a little bit. All right, so our first one was this. This is the Kentucky Bluegrass. I still think uh, that I'm going to like this one. It's a little bit on the light side, but I think it's got enough character to be uh, seen in a fountain pen. I just hope it looks more like this and less like this. We'll see how it goes. Uh, secondly, we have here the uh, Pennsylvania Slate Crisp Formula, and I think this one I'm going to like. I, it came off really well from the dip pen, and I hope it looks as good from a fountain pen. Uh, and then, of course, Stormwater Runoff, which has, I think, the most character of any of these so far. Uh, you can see some really interesting colors in this swatch, and it looks really nice up here from the dip pen as well. So that's cool. And then, this is Saltwater Taffy, uh, which I do have some worry about. I think maybe this is going to be super wet, and I need to put it in a, like a pretty fine or a dry nib just to see, uh, see it at its best. Uh, so we'll see how this one is. I'm a little bit dubious about that. And then Voltaic Arc, which I've given a minute or so here to dry. Looks pretty, pretty good, I think. It's actually not dry at all on this little bit right here that, uh, <laughs> that just kind of got blooped on there. That's pretty thick still. But it is picking up some very nice sheen. You can actually see in the letters as well as the... Uh, uh, as well as the swatch. So I'm looking forward to these. I'm going to, have to put these in some pens, ink them up, and uh, do some reviews. So be on the lookout for these five inks from Birmingham Pen Company coming to a blog very near you in the very near future. Very near? The nearish future. I like to give it a little bit of time with an ink before I give it a review. But uh, these bottles are 30 mils and they come in... Um, they add about uh, eight or nine bucks a piece. So that I think is a pretty, uh, pretty darn good price. And actually looking at this Voltaic Arc right now, they are out of everything except for the 120 mil. I must've gotten the last 30 mil sample, uh, but these go a little bit higher. These are about 11 bucks for the 30 mil, whereas these are eight or nine for the, uh, the crisp and, uh, and, and, and rich form, sorry, crisp and swift formulas. So there you go, little glass bottles full of ink from Birmingham Pin Company. They actually make all of these in-house, which I think is a very nice thing. And so I hope these are great so I can say, go get them all. But we'll see how it goes. See you later. Peace out.